Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and glory to Raptoria as we finally made it to space. Welcome to our first look at Belt Colony, a rather realistic astronaut mining simulator where, of course, we are on an asteroid belt mining resources for riches, or I guess in this case, credits. You can find out more about this game down below in the description, and let it be known that today's episode is also sponsored by the makers of Belt Colony. So thanks to them for sponsoring. Check out how cool and realistic these controls are. I appreciate it in the game when they'll do all sorts of realistic controls for a, a EVA, extravehicular activity, I believe that is. But I really like it in games where you are able to go out in a spacesuit and do maintenance or travel around and they make it rather heavy. Like the controls are rather slow as you'd imagine for an astronaut outside of a space station or on a planet or and in this case an asteroid with very low uh, gravity. So anyway, we're going to mosey out over to this base. The character uh, at the start here has been dropped off on this asteroid belt and of course we're going to also drop off resources here next to the base. So all sorts of things from aluminum to iron ore and much more can be gathered and then of course sold for cash. So it's a rather realistic and relaxing game uh, in this simulation type and also goes into first person whenever we step inside the base. So pretty cool. When we're outside, third person simulator, we get to go out there and, yep, be in our spacesuit. But when we go back inside, we go into first person and can go inside the living quarters and mosey around. So let's go do that then. I like the uh, look of the stairwell too, by the way. All shiny. It's like we're on the Enterprise. Although a little bit more, uh, I don't know, something in between. But I appreciate it. That uh, oh, it looks like a 90s music video in there. All right, lots of buttons, lots of lighting, and lots of living rooms. Yeah, we certainly can. Right, so on this main computer, this is where we're going to sell all of our items and also buy stuff. If we right-click, we can sell or buy food and water, and then we can also upgrade our spacesuit, and we can upgrade our station, and then eventually get spaceship uh, parts and also upgrade spaceship stuff too. Volatile extractors, drone pads, solar panels are all part of it. If you like games like Planet Crafter, or if you're a big fan of perhaps Space Engineers, it's kind of a perfect mix between the two where instead of just doing um, travel, you're actually somewhere working continuously, and I appreciate that. Uh, and Planet Crafter, I really like that too, where you're kind of in one area for a long time, mining stuff and building your own little base. And that's kind of another thing that this game reminds me of is uh, the interior and seeing some of these chairs reminds me of Star Citizen, but it also does feel like Planet Crafter at the same time with the module here. So hopefully we eventually get to expand upon it. I don't think we do, but it would be cool if we actually uh, did something along those lines. So anyway, got to go make some money. So over time, the food, water, and power will go down, so we'll need to make purchases for that.
and eventually make enough money to buy upgrades uh, to make more money over time. We'll be able to upgrade the spacesuit. We can carry more than what we've got currently, but we're just going to go over here at full speed over to this um, little rock pile. The game could also be played with controller. I did try it out a little bit, but uh, for me, keyboard is a little bit more comfortable uh, for this purpose, but I think a controller, when learned, can be a lot more powerful. Let's go ahead and grab whatever this is. Looks like... Actually, I'm not even sure. Silicate? I'm going to make a guess. Aluminum ore. Nice. Yeah, the astronaut will actually get down and put stuff into his backpack. I'm not sure exactly what we can do for mining at a certain point. Like, I know we get a laser or like a kind of something that looks like a welder or a cutting torch to be able to go through these rocks. And that reminds me of uh, Star Citizen quite a bit. But I do appreciate the tediousness and the realism of having to go to a <laughs> pile of rocks, pick them up, throw them in your backpack, and then bring them back to sell. It's certainly uh, relaxing to be able to do things this slow. It's almost like fishing in a way. All right, backpack's about 75% full. Let's go ahead and head to the next source. And I think this one, looking at it, might be large enough to where we actually have to use some of our cutting tools. So we'll get to that in just a moment. All right, we're zooming in. Oh yeah, that's a pretty big looking uh, boulder there. Also, it looks like there's a fail-safe system that when we get really close to the asteroid and they're coming in hot, uh, it looks like it'll slow us down a little bit. So when you see it quickly pulsing like that, that's the uh, game kind of making it... Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, he's got it, like, in his wrist. Cool. But that's the game slowing us down a little bit for safety. All right, looks like there's another pile up there, 63 meters from us, and another one 53 meters from us. And we're probably going to be too full in our backpack, and we'll have to make two trips. So we'll go over to that cone. It looks like a trash can next to the base. And uh, luckily, we can store everything outside. It seems to be, on, I, I think, unlimited capacity for storing all the ore. So we can basically store everything there uh, before we sell it, and we can make as many trips as we feel like doing. Of course, until we need to buy something valuable like water or food. I mean, we don't have to. We can always choose death, but, uh, <laughs> you know, not a good thing. Dying to death is permanent. All right, back to that pile. We do have bearings on the screen. Uh, we're heading east right now. We're eastbound and down, loaded up in truck, and doing what they say can't be done. we got a short time to get there. Actually, we have quite a bit of time. We got good oxygen. There we go. Now, always is a failsafe. You can hit the dirt. That's a useful thing. But I need some more astronauts in Raptoria. This would be fantastic for multiplayer. It could be one of those projects where eventually, because this is an indie dev, and they're getting started by making their, you know, first game around this type of uh, colony building, uh, multiplayer would be a welcome site for something like this to be able to build a colony with friends. And uh, there'd be the kind of the first the kind of game that I've seen like that, where you're mining on asteroids specifically and selling them from your base. Although I've seen some things similar to that, but it usually revolves more around building a spacecraft to do so. Although I wouldn't mind a small vehicle. If you're a big fan of games like Hydroneer, I also see this kind of being uh, similarly fun to be able to go grab stuff and put it into storage without too much effort put in towards the conveyor belts and the um, and the. Uh, setting up a production chains, which actually for a chill game like this, I kind of prefer that a little bit. All right, what do we got here? It, I, you know, everything has R next to it. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Is that the type of material? This could be... I'm not even sure what this could be. Hydrocarbon, okay. The other uh, area down there is also R, so I was just trying to see and go somewhere new, see if it would give us a different designation. But since that's so close to base, we can go anytime. We're also going to need to remember where base is because, as you can see, it's not clearly marked. Once we go over the horizon, that's pretty much it. And we can always press X to panic with break. Wow, pretty big uh, place out here. Is this... Wow, oh, oh, this is space. Oh, wow. Yeah, we got plenty of room out here for activities. Okay, let's go ahead and come and grab some more. Went in hot, boys. Woo. There we go. Now, I'm not seeing any sort of... Uh, statistics for health, so I'm not sure if we can actually take damage by flying into the rock. It looks like there's always a safety break to stop us from, you know, careening into the unknown. Alright, so we're going to want to go north to head back to the base. So that'll be north at about 23023. So let's fly around and look and see the uh, atmosphere a little bit. Not necessarily the atmosphere of this asteroid, but, you know, what I mean is what they've kind of created here. Looks dusty. Not exactly sure how large this is, but or if there's others. 
Oh, it looks like a large planet over there. Damn. If we can eventually go and explore those. Or if we can scan for more materials. I don't see anything near us either, so... I guess we'll have to start more towards the base. But it is beautiful up here. Wow. The sun. What well, looks to be a moon, but probably just another asteroid. But we'll call that the moon for now. Our only friend out here. Now, I think there's something special about these types of games where, honestly, we all want all games to be multiplayer all the time. However, I've been recently playing games like Valheim solo for the first time, and though I had preferred that game with a multiplayer experience, there's something different about the solo experience like that, and you get that oftentimes if you play a hunting game uh, solo as well. And this game does kind of have that, that feeling of hunting too, where we're going around and looking for our next prey. In this case, it happens, happens to be iron ore, a deposit of, like, aluminum. But uh, it certainly is chill, and I like the uh, controls, too, by the way, although they get tedious sometimes. It's like what I remember from Microsoft Flight Simulator learning helicopters for the very first time and just not understanding how it worked, and then eventually it kind of clicks over time, and you kind of just get better at it as you go. So there's something nice about that. Ooh, getting better at the flight. Now let's grab the best, uh, the rest of that silicate. That'll be the best thing for sale right now, since it's so close to base. There we go. So now we're gonna go and grab that too, and that should be the rest of the stuff that appears on our radar. Oh, actually, the house is located on the compass above us, and we're getting about half on the fuel there. Let's go see if we can risk it and grab that last one. Oh, actually just coming back to the base refills our oxygen and our fuel. Although I believe more of that stored in the base is kind of like a large storage. Oh, there's some more ore up here. Alright, let's go grab some of this. Now, I've seen some construction on the surface of this planet before uh, through some of the videos and whatnot. You may have seen that at the uh, start of this video. Uh, large tunnels and such that stretch across the surface of the asteroid, too. So there could be the ability to transport things via tunnel, but it's not just your typical... Uh, conveyor belt setup. It's kind of a little bit more realistic with it not just being like a conveyor belt that magically or something goes into a smelter, then a processor, that kind of thing. We're just selling the ore for now. Alright, let's grab some more. You know, this actually, for whatever reason, just reminded me of, uh, hey, copper ore, nice. Uh, reminded me of Elite Dangerous, uh, traveling around and loading up with cargo. In this case, we're just an astronaut, so the scale is much smaller, uh, but the work seems more satisfying to be able to at least have the potential to build a reputation as a person rather than just like a ship or a crew. More cost-effective that way. And a little bit more to go. More silicate. All right, so so far we found silicate, iron ore, aluminum, and uh, hydrocarbon, I believe. Our backpack is full again. So it would appear we might need to kind of rip and dip a little closer to the surface. So that way uh, we can kind of scan for new materials. Okay, we can't go any faster than this. And I'm wondering if we hit maximum altitude, if we'll just fly off the asteroid. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a, a death other than running out of oxygen or food or water, but we'll see. Let's go back inside for a moment. Oh. Magnetizing. 
I see. So we don't have gravity in there. It's actually our boots. There we go. Cool. All right. So we can only see our stats when we're here inside the base. Uh, there must be a way to switch between those because you never know if you were low on food or water outside unless you can switch between those. You'd have to come back and check all the time. Go ahead and take a look at what we've got. How much can we sell now? Oh, greenhouse. Nice. We can buy greenhouses, metal refinery. Now, I'm assuming a lot of these are inside our base so that we can place them internally. It's not something that works externally like the conveyor belt thing I mentioned before. That's kind of weird how we can actually buy some of this stuff, though we might not have the credits for it. I think it'll just tell us insu insufficient credits, but... Oh, look at that. Wait, what? Prices are going up. Or do they fluctuate artificially? Oh, they do. Oh, damn. You can kind of sit here and watch, like, the crypto market. There we go. Let's sell with one, 110 or whatever. Wait, sell ore. Silicate ore. Food, water, spacesuit upgrade. Oh, wow. Damn. We got 6,712 from that. Wow. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, spacesuit upgrade. Increase thrust and speed by 20. Certainly do that. A steam achievement for that too. Oh hell, let's upgrade the suit twice and buy a we buy stuff at ten thousand. I'd say it's probably a better idea to upgrade the suit first and then start upgrading all the other things. Storage upgrade ten thousand. Solar panel two. Power is at hundred percent currently though. Got a drone pad or extractor. Of the minor things are out of the way. I think they expected us to start there. Well, that's good. Oh. Oh, we're getting a delivery. Delivery complete. Ah, okay. It was like Amazon pulling up. Alright, so did we actually get that? Is that installed? Or do we have to go pick that up? Questions, questions, questions. Let's see if the suit is faster. Oh, yeah. This must have a much higher top speed now. Oh, for sure. Yep. Well, that's cool. So now we can go further, faster. And that means we can bring back more ore throughout the day. I like how our base is built into a little uh, cave. It's cozy, although, you know what else hangs out in caves? Bears. And bears and me, we don't get along. If you've ever seen all the survival games on this channel? Oh boy. I would not be surprised if a space bear was rolling up here sometime soon to uh, take over my base. But then again, space doesn't have the things they love. No salmon, no honey. But we do have a Raptoria. We share that, at least. Alright, some more ore here. So the delivery vehicle will drop off stuff for us, such as our suit upgrades and whatnot, but I wonder if there's other things that we can uh, see if we were to sell something, especially if we get a large amount of it. It'd be cool if a larger dropship came down. I'm also wondering if we might be able to find derelict wrecks on this uh, asteroid. That'd be really cool. That'd be a great feature to add in the future would be to find a, a wreck or something and be able to salvage that a little bit. Uh, the game is called Belt Colony, so anything that you would do in order to create a colony of uh, people and survivors and workers would definitely be viable. Not like you would just be limited to mining. You could also perhaps do a fuel operation. It'd be really cool if we could do some refueling. Start this way, then eventually become a space gas station. And uh, having, like, an area for people to land and create uh, landing pods and whatnot, that'd be really cool. Potential here is is certainly, uh, I guess, unlimited, really. It's just limited to space. There's a lot of that. There we go. 
Wow, getting better with these controls a little bit. Mashed into the ground there, but the precision placement at least is there. Gonna go. <laughs> well, landing's always the worst part, isn't it? Okay, don't see anything there. was some resources to our northeast. Oh, there's definitely some stuff out here. Gotta be a way to scan. Let's see. We have left shift for a modifier. Extra break. We do have a light on us. That's a very good light. Most games you get such a puny light, especially in space, it's not even worth using. Here I feel like a helicopter during like a high-speed chase. Gotta be something. Got no ore detected here. Oh, it looks like the base is still marked. Okay. Well, still a good idea to get a feel to where the base is. I thought it was somewhere over, yeah, that direction. So, kind of still was able to feel for it. Although that's not going to be worth it at a certain point. There's more rare materials away from the base. Platinum ore. Okay, so that must sell for quite a bit. And he also mentioned titanium earlier. No, not titanium, copper. More platinum. Oh, man. Alright, hopefully that's worth a lot. So a variety of materials to find. You know... Now this just brings me right back to mining in Star Citizen, although that's much more tedious. I, I really wish... I love the mining in that game, uh, but I, I like how it's done here a little bit more of just like being able to be more profitable on foot. That game you have to scan so much and you... I don't know. It, it, uh, this is nice to at least be able to like use this little laser thing and make it so quick. Although... Uh, Oh, wow. Yeah, I appreciate the variety of being able to pick up raw materials off the ground, or in this case, like break a rock to get the ore on the inside. And hopefully, this is going to be worth some big money here. This is the type of rock where it's going to take us a few trips. So it would be good if we um, were able to mark coordinates or ping the map somehow. If you wanted to come back to a location like this, you're going to have to remember exactly the bearing you were at. So, like, we would be at 260. Actually, uh, we're rolling right back to the base. That'd be around at like 285 or something. But anyway, careful now. Nice. I wonder if maximum altitude means we can hit maximum speed. There is a potential that even if we're at maximum altitude, it could be based on the um, the lowest point below, or the highest point below us for the ground. We're able to go higher based on going over a mountain. Or if we'll have to navigate large cliffs and such based on uh, a maximum altitude like an atmosphere around us. Well, it's coming for another drop. Thirteen units of ore. All right, that's got to be good money. Let's sell this. Nice. Uh, it's really um, forgiving too at how you dock into the base. You don't have to be precise, and it's the same with mining. You can kind of just right-click and get close. So that's kind of nice. 
Let's see if we can get these units up to uh, well, like 112 or something. I wish there was a way we could select the ore. Seems like we have to start with silicate. It would also be nice to have an algorithm sell for us at a certain point. For example, farming simulator, if you store a bunch of wheat or barley or whatnot inside storage tanks, you'll then be able to be tipped off whenever they are the perfect price to sell. So either a system to do it for you automatically because it's taken automatically, or at least something to tip you off on when it is um, the highest price or whatnot, or uh, above a certain threshold, then you could take advantage of it and strike when the iron is hot, or at least when the iron is more profitable. Certainly want this to creep up again back up to 112. Let's see if we can sell it at least maybe like one, 110 if we can. Seems like it's loving to hit low, isn't it? All right, we'll sell that one. I'm hoping that it'll change to some other unit. Oh, there we go. Now it switches to iron ore, okay. So we're at 215, 212. Wow, platinum sells for 2600. Oh wow, all right, we're selling we're selling everything. Just sell it all. 14,922. Fantastic. Well, uh, we could get a spaceship landing pad, although I'm not sure what, exactly what that does. That might allow for the drops to drop closer to us, but again, I'm not sure. We can expand with the second floor. We can get a carry-all, but that's 15,000. A lot of these are NA, except for solar panels. Storage upgrade. Now, is that... F I believe that's for our base, but it doesn't feel like it's limited. We can also buy a composite refinery, which might be worth a lot of... M oh, well, there's a metal and a composite refinery. Both. Let's just do the, uh, let's do the spaceship upgrade. Not the space suit, but the station itself. Anything else new here? All right, let's see. Station upgrade one with the landing pad, please. And we've got spacesuit upgrade, but we're a little low on money. Moolah. So will this build? Construction complete. Okay. So they dropped it off and did it for us. Oh, I see. As we add on to the base, the base will now require more power. We have a minimum power. But solar panels will be needed to add more stuff onto the base. So we'll need to build solar panels and stuff next. To continue to expand. Okay. And we'll need to go for food and water. Alright, so I'm not sure what this is for. This must really be for, like, bulk delivery. Maybe, maybe that unlocked new options for us to get new stuff. like a little bit more description but it's still fine and that platinum ore that was worth a hell of a lot of money so titanium and platinum and maybe perhaps i hate to say it uranium maybe perhaps we could uh, get some sort of a uh, radioactive protection or something for that kind of cool to be able to get shielding to protect ourselves iron ore basic not bad Wow, he's filling up. Very nice. All right, let's go find one more. So at this point, I certainly would like to upgrade my spacesuit to be able to hold more stuff. And it seems like the most profitable run to do is just to go far away from the base, hope for platinum or titanium, 
and then fly it back and then start trying to get a metal processor, although that might require a bigger base to do that. Regardless, it's still a fun little scavenger hunt. You never know what you'll find. Up the crater there. Let's fly a little closer. Nice. Curvature of the uh, asteroid here. Material. We just got to be close to detect it. Ooh, some good deposits here. Find out what's on the ground. Okay, more iron ore. Wait a minute, there's a different symbol here. This looks like a crystal. Or wait a minute. This could be a site for a drill. Is that a drill bit? Ah, okay. So this seems to be an iron ore deposit that's so heavy in iron ore that we could actually build an extractor. Oh, cool. All right. Oh, aluminum. That's not bad. Very good stuff indeed. So this is the early game boring sleeper grind that makes you appreciate all the stuff that's later in the game. Now I don't mind this at all, honestly. I could probably do this for like a couple hours before getting bored and then having a ton of cash ready to go to then upgrade the base immensely and go from scavenger mining mode to just build mode for a very long time. Uh, but you know, I don't think the goal is necessarily just pure optimization of autom automation here. It's not automation, it's mostly just like, do whatever you want. So long as you can pay the bills to keep yourself alive, the food bill being paid for, and whatever else, you'll just be fine. Alright, back to base. There we go. That's a good break. Saves on fuel. We'd be dead, smiling. Cool. Alright, let's sell off everything we got. Would also be nice on the sell screen to see some sort of a bar graph to see trends for sales. You know, like is iron ore up or down, whatever. Oh, oh did I forget to put things in the little thingy there. My bad. Gotta go back outside. Not so excited to sell. There we go. Oh. Trapped on the walkway. There we go. Alright, central terminal. Now we can sell. There we go, 7,000. Cool, so now we, uh, yeah, we buy a little bit of water. Buy units of 10%. Okay, so that's going to be spendy. Uh, spacesuit upgrade 3. I want to see what the um, carry-all upgrade is. Increase thrust and speed by 20. Increase storage capacity by 10. Wow. But wait a minute. We bought a spaceship landing pad. Transport and deploy structures with the carry-all. Ah, so that's how we build things. So if we want to build an extractor, we then need a station to then pick up our, and we need to buy a carry-all to then pick it up and bring it to the site. So the ore extractor will cost 10,000, then we need a way to actually transport it to the site. They won't drop it off at the site itself, which is kind of cool. It means we're buying our own construction equipment. No one can mess with us. So we can buy a greenhouse and upgrade that twice. There are upgrades, there are refineries, there are um, other things that I think go inside the base or will be outside close to the base. So we'll always have to come back here. No sprawling conveyor belts, which I kind of like. I like doing the work. Well, let's buy the third upgrade for the uh, suit. Actually, that's what increases the storage capacity too. We got a fully upgraded suit. And we got a little bit of a station upgrade too for this uh, starting pad. So I guess we're kind of fully upgraded for the basics. Get a 95 on that one, 97 on that one. 
and power. We're going to need to focus on electricity next if we're going to build more. Oh, we can move place buildings for 5,000. Nice. And a solar panel, which will provide us with... Oh, it doesn't necessarily say wattage or percent, but it'll only cost us 2,000, which is a hop it and a skip away. Oh, and here comes our uh, cargo again. Oh, we'll use my landing pad. Oh well, at least we get it for free and don't have to do anything else once it arrives. Alright, so just a little cutscene for base expansion. What is this, a sleep pod? Maybe a shower? Kind of looks fancy, like a shower could be. I guess this would be for the sleeping, huh? I like a little bunk bed here. Clothing storage or maybe food or something. We can sit down here. Not too much to the base, but it's simple. And it's, uh, it's cozy. All right. Now we go. Top speed. Let's see how we can go. Yeah! Wow, we're going fast now. Much better than before. Glorious Raptorian technology. Rip and dip, brother. All right, folks. Well, that's going to be it for our time today at Belt Colony. But this is certainly the type of game I'd love to live stream and just chill out with on an afternoon and just hang out with everybody and mindlessly gather ore, unlock new stuff, make money, and just build a cozy little base and kind of feel proud of getting everything done. Wow, you can even see my shadow down there. Cool. Well, make sure you check this game out down below in the description. Again, thanks to the devs for sponsoring this video. You can check it out again with that link or just search for Belt Colony and just chill out with some awesome space games. There's been a lot of great ones on the channel recently, and this is certainly an indie title to keep an eye on for more features and future updates for sure. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you all next time. Shadow Man out. All right, mission complete. No bears. Yay. That's as high as we can. Yeah, that's right.